This video will explain the double edentulous guided smile chrome technique from records through surgery. Double arch edentulous surgeries are very different than other chrome surgeries. The pin guide and the flap are used and designed much differently than conventional chrome. The pin guide is a soft tissue supported guide and must fit the tissue intimately and the occlusion must be exact. The successful outcome is a result of the pin guide fitting exactly as the patient's existing dentures or new dentures fit. It is critical that the steps are followed for surgical and restorative success. As you can see in the images, the patient's existing dentures do not exhibit proper occlusion and this must be corrected. With improper fit or occlusion, the surgery cannot go forward. During the surgery, an ill-fitting denture means the trajectory of the implants and the bone reduction will be compromised. In this case, the restoring doctor went through all the steps of creating new dentures that can be used as spares during surgery. This followed conventional denture prosthetic setup and processing. In most cases, the new dentures that are fabricated can be used as a scan appliance by either putting radiographic markers on the surface in six different locations, labial and tongue side, or they can be duplicated into scan appliance as imaged here. Please allow the laboratory to duplicate the new dentures to make scan appliances. Once the scan appliances are, or the dentures are confirmed to fit 100% and the doctor is happy with the tooth position, then a dual scan technique is performed. This is following the traditional Nobel uh, dual scan protocol, which is scanning the appliance, or in this case appliances, seated in the mouth, fully, with no rock, in occlusion. You do not want anything to separate the upper and lower arches. You want the teeth to come together. That's the first scan. Then scan the appliances alone individually. Rest them on top of a piece of foam on the chin rest on the scanner or sometimes there's a scan table that comes with the equipment. Either way, make sure that the scan appliances do not rest on plastic. They need to be up and floating on a very low density material like packing foam. Then you will export all three scans. The scan of the upper appliance, scan of the lower appliance, and the scan with both scans inside the mouth. The important part of this is that the scan in the mouth captures every part of the patient from near the chin up to the nose. With these sets of DICOM and the standard chrome photographs, we will prepare the case for the online meeting, placing the implants in the ideal position according to the work authorization, and then we'll host an online meeting with the doctor and uh, finalize every implant position and uh, tooth position, bone reduction levels, etc., until the doctor is 100% satisfied. Then we will go into production. Once the online meeting is finished, we will take 10 days to fabricate Chrome Guided Smile for surgery. And this is the, the case we were just showing, uh, where we were sending a, a, a pin guide was the first image, and then the surgical prosthetic second image. Here's the rapid appliances, and here are the backup dentures. Uh, the doctor wanted um, conventional dentures as one backup, but then also the milled PMMA dentures. Uh, and then here are the osteotomy guides and fixation bases. As mentioned earlier, the double arch chrome edentulous surgery is unique. The pin guides are both seated at the same time, maxillary and mandibular pin guides. They are adjusted to make sure that there is no rock. They must have a stable, steady seat on the upper and the lower, and the bite must come together. Adjust a little bit as needed. So again, both pin guides are seated and adjusted until there's no rock and the occlusion comes together perfectly. Then they are removed from the mouth and they are assembled with the fixation bases. And with the both assemblies, uh, they are reinserted back into the mouth and the patient's uh, mandible and head are held together while the sites are drilled. Drill all the sites, mandibular and maxilla, and place pins in one at a time. With all the sites drilled and the pins seated, remove the mandibular pins, remove the fixation base and the pin guide, and the mandibular now is on hold until the maxilla is finished. In the maxilla, 
remove all the pins and the fixation base as well and prepare to lay the flap. You'll notice in this video that Dr. Towel, who's performing the surgery, lays a labial flap. This aids in simplified suturing later as the bone reduction will allow the labial flap to be folded over the ridge. A scalpel is used to lay the flap. It's important to note that Dr. Towel, Dr. Isaac Towel, who is performing this surgery, did not drill the labial sites first. And this is a technique that is sometimes chosen in which the, uh, the flap is, is created and then the pin guide is inserted and then the, the sites are drilled. Either option is acceptable. So again, just to reiterate, you can either place the pin guide or in this case pin guides initially and drill all of your sites or you can lay the flap and allow the pin guide to rest just on the tissue on the ridge and the palate in the maxilla and then drill the sites after the flap is laid. Either way is acceptable. We've heard issues over the years that if the sites are already drilled and then the fixation base is removed and the pin guide is removed that it could be difficult to find the holes again uh, when um, inserting the fixation base you know, later in, the, later in the day when performing the other arch. However, the, the, the amount of accuracy uh, that, is, um, that is included when you have both pin guides in is probably worth uh, searching for the holes. Once the fixation base is seated, then the rest of the chrome surgery follows all other chrome surgical protocols, which is uh, reduce the bone to the level of the fixation base. And uh, I know a lot of doctors um, tie off with a suture, the, the lingual tissue, and then of course perform, perform all the bone reduction. And then this is a helpful trick that all of our Chrome users, well, most of our Chrome users use, which is to place the carrier guide and make sure that it seats and clips in uh, gingerly. And if it does, uh, then you can place the prosthetic on and you can check uh, occlusion in a single arch case, but in a double arch case, you can't really because the opposing is gonna be new teeth. Uh, in this case, they happen to just come together. Uh, then, uh, then the osteotomy guide is seated and all the sites are drilled. As, uh, as normal chrome protocol. And the implants are placed, and uh, just like many systems, uh, this system allows the implant to be placed through the surgical guide. Once the implants have been placed, uh, the carrier guide is reinserted, and the mulch unit abutments are placed, as well as the temporary cylinders. Uh, in this case, the doctor used impression posts and uh, they are all um, tightened down and the green gaskets are used to block out the carrier guide and the prosthetic is inserted and the, uh, the, the, the prosthetic conversion begins. Uh, once the prosthet prosthetic is uh, fully seated onto the carrier guide and there's no rock or gap uh, adjust as needed, then the, uh, then the small uh, blue blockout plugs are placed in each cylinder, and then the VOCO or other material, we really only recommend VOCO or perhaps Stellar, uh, are, are, they're both used to, um, to pick up the prosthetic. Uh, the VOCO that we send is a self-cure. It is not a light or dual cure. It takes about 120 seconds. Uh, and each, um, each site is backfilled until the prosthetic is connected to the temporary cylinder. And that is the pickup process. Then the prosthetic is removed. And in this particular case, the doctor opted for aesthetic rapid appliances, which means uh, the duplicate of the long-term prosthetic is printed and we add uh, pink to the labial. And it's an aesthetic rapid appliance that a patient can wear this on ultra short term uh, while we're fabricating the final restorations. So just as you can see here, there's a second pickup process. It's optional, but we do recommend it uh, on every case so that you have an exact duplicate uh, as, a, as a backup um, while the patient is going through the healing phase. And you can use that backup as a way to transfer the records to the laboratory. It's a simple process to, uh, to transfer all the records, implant position, tooth position, um, occlusion, bite, everything. Very handy. Then the rapid appliance is removed. 
with the, the block out gaskets and the carrier guide and then the fixation base is also removed and if, if, uh, if the doctor chooses uh, comfort caps are placed and the patient is sutured and then we move on to the opposing arch okay now on to the mandibular the mandibular pin guide fits against the maxillary uh, pin guide but it also fits against the new maxillary prosthetic this way we can ensure that there's a, a perfect seating of the pin guide now if you'll recall the the labial sites were already drilled at the very beginning of the procedure so at this point dr Tal is just going to lay the flap and then reinsert the pin guide in order to um, in order to seat the fixation base. Now the fixation base may also be able to be seated by just simply laying the labial flap and then finding the holes uh, to pin into place. Now that the uh, mandibular fixation base is in place, the bone is reduced and the normal protocols are followed for chrome, which is bone reduction, uh, try-in of the carrier guide, and um, and then the abutments are placed, temporary cylinders are placed with the carrier guide in place, and then the prosthetic, and, uh, and then the prosthetic is picked up in occlusion, and the case is finished. So thank you very much for watching. We are always uh, available to answer questions. Of course, we're available for chair side assistance uh, through every step of a chrome surgery. So we invite uh, all questions, and we, uh, we, we invite um, you to request chair side support. Thank you very much. And thank you also, Dr. Isaac Towell and Dr. Peck. Uh, Dr. Towell is a uh, KOL for Chrome, has con completed many surgeries, and is uh, just, just a wonderful advocate and asset to us um, as we go through these surgeries. Thank you very much.